Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the wrist kinematics. Till now, we have discussed about the structure, right? Now we will be moving on to the kinematics. And what is kinematics? It is the movement. So here we will be discussing about the movement, around what axis the movement happens, and what are the movements that are possible at the wrist joint. So the movements that are possible at the wrist joint are flexion, extension, and radial and ulnar deviation. Okay, simple, right? Just four movements. So first, we will start with flexion to extension. What exactly happens? What are the bones that are moving, and how the whole process occurs? And then we will move on to the center of rotation. What is the center of rotation? Around what axis the movement occurs? And then few more points to just keep in mind about the wrist joint in general, right? So let's start with the topic. First, regarding the flexion extension, it is highly variable. Okay. I will be talking about it over here, but first, what we need to know is there are like different theories about flexion to extension, how the movement occurs, what are the bones moving. So first, a guy called Guildford came, okay, and he did some research, and he said that basically your proximal, all the carpal bones, what they, what happens is when you go for extension, all of them just collapse, and the extension happens at the distal carpal joint, right? So that's what Guildford said, but then. Another guy called Gracia, he came and he said that basically your scaphoid and lunate. Okay, let me get the wrist joint. So basically, this is your scaphoid right over here. Scaphoid, and then this is the lunate. So scaphoid and lunate, they kind of go for opposite motion. That is, from flexion when you are going to extension, scaphoid goes for downward movement, whereas Lunate goes for upward movement, and they kind of create this counter rotation movement, and then the extension happens. And then another person came and he said something else. So the theory about the movement at the wrist joint is highly variable. What we are going to learn though is the <coughs> model given by Conwell. Okay, that is here. We are going to talk about that. And the problem with that model is it's kind of slightly oversimplified, but it is the best we have right now, I guess. So let's start with it. First, flexion to extension we'll study, and then how extension to flexion happens. Okay, this video is mostly focused on flexion extension. Next video will be about radial and ulnar deviation. Okay, so flexion to extension, what happens is first, your hand has to be in flexion, right? Your wrist joint from flexion, your wrist comes till neutral, and during this movement, what happens is. Active extension happens at the distal carpals. Okay, yeah, distal carpals and your MCP. All these work as one segment. Okay, and the proximal carpal bones are not moving along with them. Just the distal carpal and the MCPs are moving on top of your proximal carpal bones. So that's what I've mentioned here. In active extension at distal carpal and MCP till neutral. Okay, so active extension happens from here to here. Okay. From flexion to neutral, where only the distal carpal bones are moving. Now, after it has reached neutral, the SC ligament, that is the scapho capitate ligament, puts scaphoid and capitate in close pack position. Okay, so let us first find where is the scapho capitate ligament. Okay, this is the scaphoid lunate triquetum. Like she looks too pretty. Try to catch. So this is the capitate and this is the scaphoid, right? So there will be a ligament between them. So again, over here, scaphoid. Don't get confused. See, the scaphoid was over here, right? Scaphoid and capitate was over here. So that is the capitate. So these two, these two bones will be fused by this ligament. This ligament will become taut at the neutral position. Okay, from here, flexion when it reaches the neutral position, this ligament will become taut. And what will that do? It will put these both. Bones in a close pack position, like in a tight position. Right now, everything is in close pack position, right? Because we have to hold these together, all the bones. That's why all the wires are put and they are held in a close pack position. 
but this is what it will look like just these two bones at neutral so at neutral sc that is the sc ligament puts scaphoid and capitate in close pack position now since these are in close pack position what will happen from neutral to your 45 degree okay from here you came till here right now from neutral to 45 degree of extension what will happen is your scaphoid and the distal carpal will move on a relatively fixed lunate and triquetrum now lunate and triquetrum where is it over here right lunate and triquetrum she looks too pretty correct okay she looks too pretty so this is the lunate and this is the triquetrum so they are kind of not along with your scaphoid now because scaphoid is in close pack position with your capitate right so now what happens is from neutral to 45 the capitate told scaphoid you come along with me right from neutral to 45 capitate told to scaphoid you come along with me let them be on their own so scaphoid and capitate they along with the distal bones and this whole thing move till 45 and they basically roll or they move on top of your lunate and triquetrum okay so that's what i mentioned here from neutral to 45 scapid, scaphoid along with your distal carpals move on relatively fixed lunate and triquetrum now at 45 degree your scaphoid lunate ligament puts scaphoid and lunate in a close pack position so once from neutral you reach to 45 at 45 what will happen is this is your scaphoid correct over here thumb side scaphoid right scaphoid and lunate there is a ligament between them okay so i'll mark it like this over here okay ligament between them this one scaphoid lunate ligament this will become taut and now what will happen scaphoid will okay scaphoid over here will tell lunate come along with me during the extension so this ligament will become taut and it will uh, the scaphoid and lunate will go into a close pack position so that's what i mentioned at 45 degree your scaphoid lunate ligament puts scaphoid and lunate into a close pack position now what will this do your lunate and triquetrum are already like really good friends they are already together your scaphoid and capitate became friends at neutral position and then at 45 degree your lunate and scaphoid became good friends right so now at this point all these carpal bones right this sl and sc ligament putting all the bones into close pack position what will this do this will unite all the carpal bones and they function as a whole unit all the carpal bones what we can see over here right now all are in close pack position they function as one unit and the complete extension occurs when your proximal articulating surface of carpals that is all these bones proximal right this is the distal and this is the proximal articulating surface right of the carpals move on top of your radius and tfcc with all the ligaments taut so there is your uh, radius and t uh, the tfcc and ulna right and all these bones form a compact structure and then they move on top of your radius and ulna and the tfcc right so that's when the complete extension occurs right so that's how an extension motion happens so basically from flexion you come till neutral where your capitate tells your scaphoid to come along with him then till 45 scaphoid comes along with him then scaphoid tells lunate you come along with me so then lunate and triquetrum are anyways friends so all of them come together and then whole all the carpal bones they become in a they come in a close pack position with all the ligaments taut and that's when the full extension happens on top of radius and your tfcc with the proximal articulating uh, carpals so that was about the flexion to extension now extension to flexion what will happen is vice versa exactly opposite of that so basically first you'll start with all the taut ligaments correct on top as you go to 45 degree one ligament will let go that is your scaphoid lunate ligament correct uh, it will say lunate you can stay over here we'll take the scaphoid with us and then scaphoid it will come till neutral and then scaphoid also will be like okay capitate you can go ahead and then full flexion will happen so that's how this flexion extension model was developed by conwell okay this is explanation by conwell but again it is a very oversimplified model why do i say this 
because it was seen that intercarpal motion right the motion between the carpal bones especially the proximal ones it varies a lot with both your magnitude and the direction where they move and how much they move this varies a lot with your axial compression or flexion or extension that's what i mentioned here so that's why this model is not really a perfect or a true model but it's the best we have so now going on to the center of rotation the center of rotation for your flexion extension okay your flexion extension and then ulnar and radial deviation is your capitate okay over here so around this capitate your radial and ulnar deviation happens okay simple right and then again if you pass the axis through this like this flexion and extension happens through the capitate so that's what i mentioned here head of the capitate is the keystone if you remember in the ankle what was the keystone it was the navicule right that was forming the keystone for the whole arch of the foot so similarly over here the arch that is created by your carpal bones i will be talking about the arch in the future videos the arch that is created by the carpal bones the keystone is your capitate for your arch so both your anterior posterior and coronal axis they pass through your capitate and the capitate the axis that passes it creates the center of rotation for your flexion extension and your radial and ulnar deviation right so that is your center of rotation for your wrist kinematics and then finally some small fact that i wanted to mention was there was computer modeling and cadaveric studies done and what it showed was there was increased intra articular contact that happens with your extension so from flex so from flexion as you go into extension the intra articular contact that happens between the carpals increases okay so which was kind of counteracting the whole fact that the concave convex rule exists because when we are mobilizing the wrist if you remember we go for a posterior or a downward glide okay downward glide to improve extension because of the concave convex rule and how the joint surfaces are aligned but over here it says it increases which kind of counteracts your concave convex rule that we have already mentioned so that's why i'm saying there is lot of uh, research that has to be put in over here to get exact idea of how exactly the wrist movement occurs because it is very complex so i'll leave you guys over there with this small concept of flexion and extension how your sc ligament and sl ligament become taut and the extension happens from flexion to extension right and then we saw the center of rotation that is the capitate so that's all we have for this video in next video we will be talking about the radial and ulnar deviation so that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching